Hello and welcome back. My name is Jenna Lee and I am so happy that you're here. Today is all about preparation. I am preparing for baby number four. So today we are going to be making lots of freezer meals. Whether you are expecting a baby or not, you can take away some good recipes and some good ideas for making freezer meals for any time that you need them. There was one day this week where something very unexpected happened. And I'll tell you what that is in just a minute. But it reminded me of the importance of being prepared. And I'm not talking about preparation in a fearful way, but more of an an in-tune way, being in tune with what you and your family need and what you're going to need and really listening to those inner thoughts. When we feel like we have things in place and we are prepared for things to come, we feel at peace. And peace is something we all really need. But before we get into this cooking video and preparing these freezer meals, I felt the need to stock up my pantry to stock up some of our main staples that we have here in the kitchen before baby comes. You can call it nesting, you can call it whatever, but it is a real thing. We like to feel like we have all of our ducks in a row. We have everything that we need in place in case we need it, right? So we did a little bit of shopping at the beginning of the week, made sure that we had plenty of flour. I always keep on hand the main staples of bread flour, sugars, oats, grains, um, grains for grinding into wheat, um, for making bread and lots of rice and beans and all those things that we like to have stocked in the pantry for cooking from scratch. And since we live in a 100 year old little farmhouse, there is not a big pantry. I don't have a basement. I don't have a root cellar, so I have to get really creative with my storage in my kitchen and finding places to put away all of these pantry goods. If you're planning a full day or maybe two days of cooking for freezer meals, it's really important to make a list of all the things that you want to cook, make a list of all your ingredients, and make sure that those ingredients coordinate with each other so that you can use the same ingredients through multiple different meals. I am a seasonal cook and I like to cook with ingredients that are in season at the time and also with what is the best price at the stores. So today we're gonna be making some enchiladas. We're gonna be making a cheesy chicken and green bean casserole over rice. We'll be making some spaghetti bakes, pizza pockets, and also a really yummy cilantro, lime, and honey marinade and casserole. As part of our preparation, I've got some rice going in the Instapot for our casseroles, and I'm also getting some fresh mozzarella cheese started. This is a 30-minute mozzarella recipe. This recipe calls for one gallon of milk. I wish I would have doubled the recipe, but you add some citric acid that you can just pick up from the grocery store to the one gallon of milk, and you bring that up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, you add some rennet. I'm using these little tablets of rennet to some cold water. Let that dissolve. And once your milk has reached 90 degrees, then you turn off the heat and you add the rennet solution. Give it a little mix. I find the best results when I actually leave my pot on the warm stove and it seems to set faster. I'll be putting this recipe down below and I'll also put the cheese making book that I have it in, um, a link for that down below as well. Mozzarella is one of those beginning cheeses, but it is surprising how technical it actually can be and not as easy as I thought it would be. So I'm getting better every time I make it, but I just wanted to encourage you, if you're just starting out with mozzarella and it doesn't turn out perfect, just keep working with it. Give it another try and whatever it comes out as, it comes out as edible and delicious and we always eat it anyway. So go ahead and give it a try. 
And of course, if we're gonna do some pizza dough here, it's gotta be sourdough pizza. So I'm getting that started now and we're gonna be really making those tomorrow, but this will give it time for the long fermentation. And I will also link down the book and the recipe that I use to make this pizza dough. It turns out delicious every time. I love the texture of this dough and I find more and more that my body appreciates the digested fermented grains more than anything. Making these multiple meals was definitely a juggling act, so hang in there with me. We're gonna start on the honey lime cilantro marinade. And this really just came up on a whim of what sounded absolutely delicious. So I'm starting out by preparing my garlic because we're gonna be using a lot of garlic in all of our recipes. And I just was throwing things in here, but this is how the recipe goes roughly. I used about six cloves of garlic and one bunch of fresh cilantro, about a half a cup of homemade yogurt, lime zest and the lime juice from two limes, about one tablespoon of salt, one teaspoon of chili flakes, and about one fourth a cup of honey and one half a cup of olive oil and one teaspoon of onion powder. And again, I actually wish I would have doubled this recipe and used it for something else because it was so tasty. Half of this marinade is gonna go on these pork chops just as a marinade. I'm just gonna put this in the freezer in case Jared wants to pull these out and barbecue them at some point. And then the other half I'm gonna put on chicken and make some chicken honey lime cilantro casserole. So we're gonna jump back over to the mozzarella cheese. And if you didn't know you were gonna be learning about mozzarella today and you're totally not interested, just skip over to the chicken recipe. But for those who are interested, <laughs> here we go. I just wait until it turns into this kind of creamy custard, slightly thickened texture. You're gonna see the whey separate from the curd. And then you're going to cut in about one inch cubes. Give it a little stir and then strain it. This is where I feel mozzarella gets a little bit tricky because you really just need to know how it feels. And I'm still learning exactly what that's supposed to be, but you put it back in really hot water. I've also done this in the microwave and, and, and heated it intermittently for 30 seconds, but you can do the same thing on the stove. Leave it in the hot water for about 30 seconds, pull it out, give it some good stretches. And usually you do this with gloves. So I didn't have any plastic gloves. This is just me totally winging it. Um, but I found that bringing it here in a separate bowl and kind of working with it a little bit, I made it so it cooled down. And then I put it back in the hot water and just did that a few times until the cheese became smooth and elastic. Next, I'm gonna prepare the chicken. I have about five pounds of chicken breast here and I'm cutting them into thinner pieces because they're always so thick, but this would also be good with chicken thighs as well. This honey, lime, and cilantro chicken would be fabulous on the grill. So that was plan A until my propane ran out. And so I had to come up with a different idea. Um, I'll get to that later. We're gonna move on to the chicken cheesy green bean casserole and I'm starting that out by putting a good amount of butter into my pot and I'm going to brown the chicken in here and get all those yummy juices out and also add some chopped onion and some garlic and in the meantime, I'm also getting started some browned beef that we are going to split and use for our spaghetti bake and pizzas. And the other half of this, we are going to use for our beef enchiladas. So with the beef, I'm only going to be adding some chopped onions and garlic. Now this Cheesy chicken casserole can be a main staple in your house and you can switch out the green vegetables. It's really good with broccoli or even cauliflower 
I have loads and loads of green beans coming out of the garden, so that's what we're gonna use today. And we're also gonna be adding some yellow squash because I have got plenty of that too. So now that the onions and the garlic for our chicken casserole have caramelized and they're all yummy and browned, I'm gonna add the rest of the vegetables in here. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of water and put the lid on here and let those green beans steam a little bit just so they get cooked a bit more. And then really we're gonna make a roux here for a really creamy, cheesy sauce. For the roux, you just need adequate moisture in the bottom of this pan. There's lots of chicken juices and butter. You can add a little bit more butter if you need to. Um, but I'm just gonna add about half a cup, maybe a little bit more flour to this vegetable mixture and just stir it all together and let that flour cook a little bit and start to thicken on these vegetables. And then I'm adding some cream that I skimmed off the top of our fresh raw cow's milk and it's probably about two cups of cream that I'm adding here and then I'm gonna add a little bit of milk just to get the right consistency that I'm looking for I don't want it too thick not too runny and then I'm just going to add a bag of shredded cheddar cheese I think the key with these freezer meals is to take into consideration that they're going to be reheated and cook even longer in the oven. So for the chicken, it's good to keep in mind that it should be a little bit rare, maybe even a little bit undercooked, knowing that you're going to cook this again. The same thing with the vegetables and the same thing with the rice. So with chicken breast, that can be a little bit tricky. It gets really dry, but just keep that in mind. For some of the freezer meals, I picked up some of these foil tin containers that I actually really enjoyed. They stacked really well. I liked that they were kind of shallow, um, which means that they are going to take less time to bake up in the oven, um, but they had plenty of space. So I put some of those casseroles in there. And then also the smaller casserole dish is for our dinner tonight because we're having a couple people over for dinner. And I just topped them off with some shredded cheddar cheese. And here's what the finished product looked like. And I'm popping them into the freezer. It's safe to say that this recipe is a huge hit for my family. Really one of those comfort foods that we can always fall back on. And it's always, always delicious. The next morning brought something unexpected. A thunderstorm came with much needed rain, but also 80 miles an hour winds that took our electricity out. And just for a moment, the world was slower without electricity and electronics and not being able to cook. <laughs> It slowed our world down and it was just what we needed. In a way, it felt like we went back to pioneer times. 
It also cooled the weather enough to be able to go out and do some harvesting. That morning, I had a little prayer in my heart to know what I needed to do for my family, to keep us safe, and to know what to do in the very moment of the storm. And the thought came to me, just make them breakfast. So I cooked up some sausage, some eggs, a little bit of a toast, set it on the table, and that was the moment that the electricity went out. And I was so glad that I followed through with that thought to just start breakfast. So there are times when we do need to be prepared, but it really just takes listening and being in tune to know what your family needs at that time or what they're going to need so that you can feel at peace with things to come. And it can be as simple as not worrying, just doing the next task that needs to be done. It wasn't long until the dark clouds had passed and our electricity came on and I was able to go on with the rest of the cooking that I needed to get done. So today we are going to finish preparing the spaghetti bake, which we are also going to use that meat sauce in our pizza pockets. And we're also gonna be making some beef enchiladas. I kept the enchiladas incredibly simple by just adding some beans and some rotel, which is diced, tomatoes and some seasoning for the spaghetti sauce though we are adding some summer vegetables i am adding some celery some summer squash and some shredded carrot for some sweetness and i also added a few cans here um, a big can of crushed tomatoes tomato sauce and then also some diced tomatoes as well and some sugar and I just do it all to taste. A little bit of balsamic vinegar and some salt. And just let that simmer on the stove. As much as I love eating foods from scratch, and I honestly believe they taste so much better, I had to keep something simple, and that was the beef enchiladas. So we're just using canned enchilada sauce here, and I'm just adding some seasonings, some chili, cumin, and onion powder and garlic powder to the filling here, and assembling our enchiladas. They're gonna be very basic, but we're gonna be so happy that we have them later on.
Yesterday, I left the pizza dough to ferment on the counter for a few hours, and then I put it in the fridge to finish fermenting overnight, and it has been in there half of the day. This is a lot, a lot of pizza dough. You could easily bake up half of this recipe and use it for a loaf of bread or two, <laughs> but we are using it all for our pizza pockets or calzones and then I'm going to freeze the other half of it um, just as pizza dough so that we can pull pizza dough right out of the freezer and make pizza whenever we want to. And here's our homemade mozzarella. It's been sitting in the fridge and is nice and firm and we are going to shred this up and put this in our beautiful calzones. And don't forget we have this lovely honey lime cilantro chicken that has been waiting in the fridge for me to figure out what to make with it. <laughs> so I decided just to put it all in a sheet pan with some yummy summer squash and some purple onions and broil it in the oven. And we are going to serve this with all of its yummy juices right over some rice. I'm kind of wishing I would have doubled this recipe and made two dishes of this, but we're definitely going to have to make this again sometime. One of my favorite things to do is to grill chicken with summer squash and onions right on the grill and serve it as a super simple summer recipe. So someday we are going to put this baby back on the grill. But for now, it's going to make a wonderful freezer meal casserole. I have so many wonderful videos of cooking from scratch here on the channel that I want you to go and watch next. I'll put down below some links and playlists that you can watch after this video. The spaghetti bakes are pretty self-explanatory. The only thing that we added here was some homemade ricotta cheese, which I also made in a previous video about dairy treats that we're cooking here on the farm this summer and I'll put the video link for that below as well if you want to see the recipe for this easy super easy and quick ricotta cheese it just adds some more protein and another layer to this spaghetti bake and I was able to put together two dishes of this and lucky for us spaghetti is always a huge hit in our family and I know that the kids are just going to love The beautiful thing is that all of these dishes are pre-made. The hubby just has to go and put them in the oven and let them reheat and can serve directly. And we will be adding garden veggies and salads and 
all those fresh summer sides to these dishes during postpartum time. I will put the recipes down in the description box below. Please check out some of the other videos and let me know which one of these recipes you want to try yourself and which one's your favorite. And I'll catch you next time here on the Pioneer Home and I love you lots. Oh, and check the channel community page for updates. I will surely let you know when this baby comes. You better believe it.